it's no longer news that the world faces a tight battle for semiconductor domination between two titans. The Chip War With the future of military and electronic industries relying heavily on semiconductors, that is precisely where ASML comes in. It is challenging to manufacture cutting-edge silicon-based chips without the company's critical extreme ultraviolet lithography machines. But here's a spoiler, they're America's biggest trump card in the war against China. Keep watching this video to find out the current situation of the war, its implications in the future, and why China is facing an uphill drive to win the war. Before we talk about the elephant in the room, have you ever wondered why America and China are so interested in semiconductors? Semiconductors, commonly known as chips, are materials that have a conductivity between conductors and insulators. They are used in various electronics, including integrated circuits and transistors. Chips are also part of the framework of consumer devices like mobile phones, cars, and game consoles. With the global economy becoming increasingly digitized as the years go by, humanity is more dependent on chips than ever before. Given the critical importance of chips in today's world, it's hardly any surprise why national security experts often refer to chips as the new oil when it comes to international security and geopolitics. In the technology industry, there's hardly anything more important than semiconductors. Ever since China's renaissance took center stage, they've always been locked into a sort of rivalry with the United States of America. But, have you ever wondered what America's greatest competitive advantage over China is? Fun fact, it's neither weapons nor wealth. Rather than those, America's biggest strength over China is that it has a large number of close and influential friends, something which China is stunningly deficient in. To further buttress this point, did you know North Korea is the only country in the world that signed a treaty to support China in the event of a war? The most shocking part about it is that you'd be hard-pressed to describe North Korea and China as friends. They're acquaintances at best. It's no longer news that North Korea deliberately scheduled nuclear tests to embarrass China during high-profile diplomatic summits. Where's the camaraderie in that? We certainly can't see it. Some may believe that having powerful allies is unnecessary, especially if you are already a world power, but come with us, and you will clearly see why America is coming out on top. America's allies are leaders in technologies of major strategic and geopolitical importance. Let's take Taiwan, for example. Did you know Taiwan produces more than 90% of the most advanced semiconductor computer chips across the globe or that a single Dutch-based company, ASML, makes 100% of the most advanced lithography machines? They're all buddies with the United States of America and siding with them in the chip war against China. Moving on to ASML, they're the only ones that make UVs, which are extreme ultraviolet lithography machines in the entire world. In layman's terms, they're like flour to bread. Without them, you just can't make any advanced silicon-based chip. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the Biden administration and unravel the string of tech diplomacy. Building on the moves made by his predecessor Donald Trump in targeting specific Chinese tech giant firms like Huawei, the United States of America recently imposed a set of export controls that restrict the sales of advanced chips to China. With China being one of the most active players in the world of artificial intelligence, it's safe to assume they were left deflated. More than 95% of the chips used in artificial intelligence applications in China are designed by U.S. companies, as is the requisite production equipment utilized in Chinese chip factories. It's overwhelmingly clear to see how these obstacles have formed a barricade in China's quest to lead the world in AI technology and even become self-sufficient in manufacturing high-end chips. Not only did the export controls restrict them from getting advanced chips but also, they couldn't even get any manufacturing equipment for making those chips. Remember the Dutch firm ASML? China has been banned from getting the all-important UV lithography machines from them. According to an analysis by the Fathom China team at research group Gafkel Dragonomics, the export controls by Washington have three major effects. For starters, a ban on China accessing essential machines and maintenance engineers for making sophisticated chips. Secondly, creating a barricade to prevent Chinese firms from getting software tools required to design chips. And thirdly, all Chinese customers are to be barred from the cutting-edge chips used in supercomputing and machine learning. But have you ever wondered what America stands to gain in all of this? Before we answer that, did you know advanced chips are the brains behind military hardware, supercomputers, and artificial intelligence? With that in mind, the United States of America believes China is not to be trusted. 
they think the eastern giants pose a significant threat to their national security. Undersecretary at the U.S. Commerce Department, Alan Estevez, once talked about the American perspective. He said the intention was to ensure America does everything in its power to prevent sensitive technologies with military applications from being acquired by China. The threat environment is always changing and we are updating our policies today to make sure we're addressing the challenges, he said. A defenseless China could only grumble. They described the export controls as technological terrorism. Do you remember what we told you about America winning the chip war against China thanks to its powerful friends? Here's where allies like the Netherlands, Taiwan, Japan, and South Korea become so crucial. You see, if the export controls only prevented American companies from selling to China, Beijing could have created an intelligent policy to counterattack it. They could have easily diverted trade towards other nations that are giants in the field of semiconductors. Recently, Rahm Emanuel, the American ambassador to Japan, disclosed that the Biden administration was speaking with South Korea, the Netherlands, and Japan on making a fresh, unified assault to once again curb the semiconductor industry in China. Over the years, China has been developing and boosting its economy, resulting in them becoming one of the biggest players in the global chip industry. Did you know China has a 21% share of wafer manufacturing? However, China has a low single-digit design, machinery, and software share. You see, just like so many other parts of its economy, China is a giant in making chips but highly dependent on others for the necessary technologies needed to put things into action. Because of this, China is far from self-reliant. They cannot make cutting-edge semiconductors without critical players like the Dutch's ASML. With America firmly against China and its allies standing with them, or at least for the time being, things wouldn't be changing for the better anytime soon. Historically, the Netherlands hardly tends to play critical roles in global affairs. But, when it comes to the all-important technologies to make the all-important semiconductors, you'd be hard-pressed to say there's a louder voice out there. Not only are they the biggest tech firm in Europe by market cap, but they're also the largest supplier of chip manufacturing technology and design worldwide. Heading over to Asia, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company controls more than half of the global market. South Korea's Samsung foundries come in second place with a market share of 17.3%. What do all of these companies have in common? Minus the obvious fact that they're all well-known, key agents in the field of semiconductors. They all support America's philosophy of controlling the kind of advanced technology that goes to China. How many allies does China have again? We'd leave you to answer that. With everything that has been said and done, the ban would undoubtedly slow China's immense progress in chip technology. But, thanks to China's resilience, you'd be hard-pressed to say the game is already over. However, the question of China winning the chip war, or at least right now, is a completely different ballgame. Right now, America is pulling ahead of China in technical aspects of semiconductors, and some may say it's a safe distance, but China has already picked itself up, dusted its clothes, and continued its surge to self-sufficiency. Then again, the chip war is rapidly shifting from being a geopolitical conflict to an out-and-out -out battle for supremacy. While China is losing the war, especially when you consider the short term, when you take a look from a broader perspective, it's hard to determine who the eventual winner would be. With America being the country and everyone else's business, they've picked up a lot of friends and allies. Because of that, should they decide to make things harder for China, it's a safe bet to say many other nations would support them. America would likely dominate the technology used for military weapons and possibly artificial intelligence, with China now playing catch-up, but China is also likely to lead everyone else in microelectronics like cloud computing. At the end of the day, there may even be no winner. Both parties would lose, and guess what? The consumers would have things even worse. What are your thoughts about the current state of affairs regarding the chip war between America and China? Do you think there will be a winner? Also, how would you go through the barricade of powerful allies if you were China? Do tell us in the comments. See you there.